Hey there, it's Joe Henry, aka the Semi-Retired Guy again, bringing you another video on stock investing. Now, as I record this video today, we are in our fifth week of a stay-at-home order in Pennsylvania. And I don't know about you, but I'm going a little stir-crazy. I like routine, and my routine has changed quite a bit. I now wake up 30 minutes later than I used to. I don't drive to the gym anymore. I don't work out with my 6 a.m. buddies. Now I work out with my dog, clicking my face and pretty much being a nuisance. Hey, how did this woman get her dog that sits still like that? I look in the refrigerator every 10 minutes because let's face it, someone's got to eat all that food we've been hoarding for the last month or so. You can't let it go bad. I used to enjoy watching TV now and then. Now I avoid it because it's all doom and gloom. And how many times can you watch Tiger King without totally losing your faith in the human race? Regarding my stock portfolio, I used to buy only dividend champions, stocks with a history of increasing their dividends for at least 25 years. But I'm now beginning to think it might be important to add some stocks from companies which cater to this so-called new normal. My big takeaway from the pandemic is this. Although we love to eat out, go to movies, go shopping, we can kind of do these things online. It's just not as fun. And you know what? We really don't need as many brick and mortar stores as we have anyway. As a result, in just a little over a month, we've radically changed our consumer behaviors. In fact, there's the possibility that this change in our behaviors may last for some time into the future. How long? Who knows? Well, let's take a look at some of the more obvious behavior changes that this pandemic has highlighted. So let's talk about online education first. A company called Chegg Inc., symbol CHGG, operates a student learning platform that helps high school students get into college. They offer online courses, tutoring, and assistance finding summer internships. K-12 Inc., symbol LRN, they uh, are offered by many states now uh, to primary school students who want to learn from home. Uh, they offer three online education options, including tuition-free online public school, tuition-based online private school, and also individual online courses from their own curriculum. Uh, 2U Inc., symbols T-W-O-U, they provide online programs for several well-known universities in the United States, for example, Georgetown, Northwestern, UNC, and Chapel Hill. Strategic Education, STRA, provides post-secondary education programs, so their target audience is working adults. Of course, the next big trend has been working from home, and the company called Zoom, well, who hasn't heard of this company by now? They make video conferencing software that allows companies to have meetings, webinars, messaging, and file sharing. And of course, they just recently received some big endorsements from companies like Slack, Uber, and 20th Century Fox. Our right, next big trend is getting groceries online. So I'm sure you've all heard of Amazon and Walmart, but what about Prologis? This is actually the largest owner, operator, and developer of industrial real estate in the United States. They're locating key markets like Seattle, Miami, LA, and New York City. Their biggest single client is Amazon, aha. But they also provide warehousing for other companies that are offering one and two day shipping like UPS, DHL, and FedEx. Next big trend I want to talk about is watching movies online. So here you have Netflix and Disney. Enough said. But on a personal note, how come every movie I've been finding on Netflix lately has the voices dubbed in and the characters look like Eastern European mobsters? How about online gaming? Well, Take-Two Interactive Software is a leading video game publisher of key franchises like Grand Theft Auto and Red Dead. Not exactly great gifts for the grandchildren. But I guess it's better than buying them AK-47s and vape pens. What about online healthcare? Teladoc. Now this is the only publicly traded telemedicine company that I'm aware of. Full disclosure, I do work for them as a contractor. They're currently doing 20,000 virtual visits per day. And with the pandemic, everyone's afraid to go to an urgent care or emergency room because of fear they will get COVID-19. How about online gambling? The Stars Group. This company provides real and play money, poker, gaming, and betting products. They offer them directly or indirectly under several owned or licensed gaming businesses and brands, including PokerStars, PokerStars Casino, and BetStars. Next trend is online social interactions. This is one area that seems to be driving everybody pretty crazy right now. You just can't go visit a friend or go out to a restaurant or bar. So in its place, you go to Facebook. 
you say something controversial and then receive death threats from literally thousands of anonymous people. You might not know that they also own uh, WhatsApp and Instagram. Of course, Facebook has been the subject of extensive media coverage and many controversies, including fake news, conspiracy theories, user privacy, all of which has driven increased use of the site. So definitely buy this one on a dip next time Zuckerberg gets hauled before a House committee. And where would we be if I didn't mention smartphones? These are our favorite platforms for doing everything that we've been talking about so far. In fact, we access the internet much more with our smartphones than we do with our desktop devices. The Apple smartphone, a very popular platform, they claim between 20 to 40% of the market share depending on the country you're looking at. And why do we like Apple above all the other smartphone providers? It's got the strongest balance sheet of practically any company on the planet right now. Plus, the launch of 5G in the second half of 2020 will likely be a catalyst for a massive smartphone upgrade cycle. Finally, note that all of these trends we've been talking about deal with the online world as opposed to the brick and mortar world. And therefore, they will require more and more server space. For those of you like me who still think that the cloud is something up in the sky, let me tell you a little bit about the cloud. Cloud computing is the on-demand delivery of, of information technology over the internet. So instead of buying, owning, and maintaining actual physical data centers and servers, you can access these services on an as-needed basis from a cloud provider. So in other words, all these different companies I've been talking about all pay, all pay for space on a server somewhere. The largest cloud provider is Amazon, followed by Microsoft. Finally, how are we going to pay for all this stuff online? That brings us to Visa. Now, Visa operates the world's largest electronic payments network, more than MasterCard, American Express, or anyone else. You've heard of the war on cash? Well, Visa is one of the victors. Now, what if you're a millennial and you don't want to use credit cards or you can't qualify for a credit card? Well, there's Venmo, a mobile payment service owned by PayPal. Venmo account holders can transfer funds to others by a mobile phone app. Once associated mostly with payments on eBay, PayPal has become a widely accepted method of payment also. The idea is simple. Give people the ability to accept payment online quickly and securely without having to use a credit card. The company currently claims over 277 million active accounts. So as we wait out this pandemic in our homes, I hope I've given you some stock ideas that you can look into further on your own. It's not clear at this point how the pandemic will change our consumer behaviors in the future. One thing is for sure, the companies I've mentioned are expected to do well as long as consumers are able to maintain some uh, purchasing power. That's a big if though, because of this date in late April of 2020, over 22 million Americans are out of work. Finally, the semi-retired guys' videos and website and social media pages do not constitute financial advice in any way whatsoever. Nothing published by the semi-retired guy constitutes an investment recommendation, nor should any data or content published by the semi-retired guy be relied upon for any investment activities. The semi-retired guy strongly recommends that you perform your own investment research and or speak with a qualified investment professional before making any financial decisions. 